Hey everyone, today we're back to talk about hollowing models. Again, thanks to all the people who got me into 3D printing. Now let's jump right into the video. So here we're looking at a uh, one of the newly released pieces from the Chlorhaven Kickstarter, and this is one of the Grotto pieces, fantastic uh, models there. Now you see here, I've already, uh, there are four drain holes at the bottom here because a big flat thing like this, um, normally I wanna hollow this for uh, suction purposes, because even though I would tilt it, something this shape, even no matter almost how I tilt it, unless I go vertical, and even vertical, there's gonna be some decently large suction forces created uh, because of one big solid block and it's pretty round. So let me start over. So I'm gonna hollow this. You see there's four holes already. Those four holes are magnet holes and they look to be about three millimeter. I think they're for three millimeter magnets. Um, and so those are not drain holes, obviously. So I wanna hollow this model and then I wanna show you what the problem is with hollowing a model like this and you're gonna see. So here we go, we're gonna hollow it, okay? Takes a few seconds to load in and then boom. You say, okay, great, now my model is hollow. So now I need to add drain holes. Because there are magnet holes, um, I would actually just put my drain holes in the magnet holes and then if, if I do it the right size, I don't make it any bigger at least, then my, my magnets will still fit in fine I could basically just lay it on a flat surface with glue on the edges of the magnets, press, press them right in, and it'll be perfect. So I'm, I'm going to use this for my drain holes just for fun. Not that it's really fun, but, okay, this is what passes for fun in, in 3D printing. Okay, so now you say, okay, you're done. You've got four drain holes. That's perfect. Let's go and support this. And let's say, just to be lazy, you guys know I never auto-support, but let's say I I'm going to tilt it. Uh, just a little bit. Obviously, I would tilt it a little more, but for now, I'm just going to tilt it a little bit and do auto supports. Okay. And on a model like this, auto supports might actually be good enough. So I, I do my auto supports. And you say, okay, great. I'm done. It's, it's over support. It looks fine. It's going to print nice. But, but you've forgotten one thing. And that's the whole point of this video. When it got hollow, the whole top surface of this model with all the different contours now has nothing supporting it inside. So by hollowing it, you've created tons of, eye, look, look at this, tons and tons of eyelids and unsupported material inside, which is A, either gonna fail, or B, getting back to the other thing I'm always harping on, uh, possibly create some cured resin floating around in your vat, which is gonna ruin your next print or ruin your FEP, and then you're gonna be thinking, God, why are my prints failing? Uh, and it's because you, you have tons and tons of area in here that's totally unsupported. So what do we do here? You know, there, there's two choices. One, you can just reload the model and not hollow it and print it solid. And then of course, you're gonna have to tilt it more than this. Be, uh, look at all these, I'm just showing you here so much unsupported material that's either, like I said, gonna fail totally or uh, you know, possibly adhere to your FEP or float around in your vat. It's just whatever thing happens from here, it's not gonna be a good thing. Uh, so the two options, like I said, are you just print it solid, you lift it up higher, you, know, you reload the model, don't do the drain holes, and you just print it solid. The second option is you have to go back in and support it because what I wanted to show you here is that if I don't use platform, I use all, you'd think, oh, if I hit all, it's supposed to support from all surfaces to all surfaces, but it doesn't work in this case. And Part of the reason here is if I'm using my heavy supports, I don't think there's just enough room inside the model. The negative space in there isn't big enough for those heavy supports to get in there. So when I click it, even if I click all, and theoretically it should be placing supports in there, it doesn't place them in there. So that means I have to go and manually look at these islands and then go in and manually place supports like I would on the outside of the model. And here I'm trying to put some heavies in and this is where I'm seeing the problem of why when I hit auto support um, and all, it wouldn't go inside the model because there's not a sp enough space here when I click it to, to get a support in there. So if I go to my lights, since the settings are a lot, I have a lot smaller distances set, then all of a sudden there's room. So I could go in here and support with a ton of lights if I really want to keep the, the, model hodl, the, the model hollow. And that's what I would have to do. So you literally have to go very carefully inside and 
do what I'm doing now, which is play supports everywhere. Obviously, I'm not going to make you watch me trying to play supports everywhere. There's no point to it. You get the idea of the video, which is anytime you hollow a model, and, and any model, you must look inside the model afterwards to make sure you haven't created islands that need support because 99 times out of 100 when you hollow a model, you will be creating spaces inside that are unsupported. So it's really imperative that you deconstruct the model and go in there and look for those islands so you don't have failures that you don't understand, subsequent failures that you don't understand, uh, damage to your FEP, which we all know is you know the one thing you really, really want to avoid because uh, the worst thing that hap could happen there is a leak into your, into your machine of resin. So you really want to avoid uh, unsupporting islands that's you know point of most of my videos is support every island so it's really critical now that anytime you hollow a model you go in there and you look for every island every unsupported area inside that model and make sure that you have supports in there don't just hollow support and say it looks great there is a whole interior part of the model you need to be inspecting so that's basically it for this video I just wanted to give you a heads up that Hollowing is not as simple as hollow, put some drain holes, and I'm done. It's actually hollow, put some drain holes, get inside my model and see what I still need to support and what's going to cause a failure, what's going to cause damage, what's going to cause uh, cured resin floating around. Okay, so I definitely hope that this video helps you avoid failures. Uh, I'm not sure it's actually going to help you get much better prints, except I guess if you support inside, you won't have any failures resulting from that anyway. So hopefully you did learn something. Hopefully you can put this to use in your 3D printing and just get better and better at it. I'm still learning and getting better myself, just trying to pass my knowledge on to you guys. So hope you enjoy. Please uh, like, please subscribe, and happy 3D printing, everybody. Thanks.